Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe. Video. Subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. subscribe. Don't I want to start with one conversation. Oh, yeah. Let's talk. So, there was um, a conversation. Charles on TikTok. Let's talk about it. I love him, you know. I, like, but you know that. Okay, I'm not going to say the way he acts is an act, but there are videos of him from back in the day where obviously he's like his self. So I watched this. I watched a video that he did recently because I actually follow him. Sometimes his personality jumps out though and you're just like... I think he said he said that this is how he is now, but obviously he feels like he had a lot of trauma that he was dealing with and basically his evolved self is this speaking voice, is what he said. But I think I believe him. I feel like when I was younger, I talked differently and yeah. I act differently to how I am now. Is it put on sometimes? Yeah. But I think when I was watching his old videos, I think he's always been quite softly yeah. spoken. Let's talk about it. I, I still feel like, I don't know, this year, I still feel like I have a personality change coming, but I don't know what. Obviously, I'm still going to be myself. Who but are, you trying to, are you trying to evolve into someone? No. Into 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 my best self. And Me obviously, too. I need therapy before I do that. But I feel like once I go through therapy, I'm like, I'm not going to change, but something is going to be different. People are going to be like... Who's that? Who is he? What I'm has healed. he? Well, he's ill. You have ill. Do you know what? I'm in my bad beat era. I've said this is the year that I've decided. I've made a choice, a psychological, physiological, <laughs> mentological <laughs> choice. Mentological. To be a bad bee. Yes. Bad beeism is mine. I have had my bummy stage, sufferer stage, broke stage. I've had my goth stage mm -hmm. my man them stage mm -hmm. you know i was very much a tomboy yes i have decided to be in my bad b stage and i want to i'm in my bad b era and i'm and i'm really manifesting that i just you want don't it manifest because you are in it do you see yeah. the way you look right now yeah y'all see them see i'm just trying to be me just trying to be me just trying to be me me, me. yeah trying to be me wanna yeah. see yeah. yeah wanna be yeah. every originality yeah. yeah i'm a bad b Ooh. in a bad era Ooh. i'm a bad b Ooh. you know i hear ya Ooh. you know i hear ya Ooh. in a bad era <laughs> <laughs> i'm getting warm now me and victor have been in this um another rapper stage in our lives where we swear we're not rappers but we just and rap everything it was it was you walking into the living room crack of dawn <laughs> we've both just woken up you walk in top of the morning everything darling what did i just said okay we need <laughs> we need an intervention <laughs> We need an intervention because we're not normal. Half of the time, you call me on FaceTime and you just start rapping. At this point, that's our greeting. That's our... Listen, I'm in my... I'm also in my Eminem era. I actually feel like in another life, I might have been a rapper. I've, no, but it's facts. I see it because you're good with words. So. Yeah. I could have been that, could have been that. Everybody move, everybody have a heart attack. Step into the scene and I'm looking like uh, everybody see uh, and they love me like crack. Uh, are you fucking dumb? Why my shut fucking up. mixtape shut is coming up. out? Are you fucking shut stupid, up, bro. bro? Shut up, Are you bro. fucking stupid, bro? You fucking dumb. That's coming in and doing all the cra crazy heart attack and don't let me even start getting. Hey, hey, don't let the muscles start warming up me. <laughs> don't let the muscles start. <laughs> crazy like heart attack. You know your shit is whack. My money, my money stack. Oh, that was good. I can't lie. I was actually just thinking of that. That was so I good. Had to think of the delivery. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta save it from the booth. For the we'll save booth. it from the booth. But I've got a question now. Let's get it cracking. Cool. There was a conversation on Twitter, and basically, there was a conversation where there was a girl who brought her man to a girls' trip. Yeah, I've, I've, I saw the tweets actually. And people were like, 
Hold on. Let me read what the what, what, what the producer said. A woman went live on social media while on her girl's trip to say she was fearing for her safety because one of her friends didn't, appre- didn't appreciate her bringing her boyfriend around the last day of the trip. The boyfriend also brought her other male company to their accommodation, which the friends did not appreciate. The woman on InstaLab didn't understand the friend's frustration and went on to call her hostile. The internet sided with the friend because girl's trips are for girls and if the boyfriend comes through, everyone must be able to sleep with him. Yeah, so I, that's the tweet Explain. that I saw. That's the tweet I saw where the girl was like, oh, um, if you bring your man to games night or to a girl's trip, can we all fucking... Are you... America's not a real place. This is, I know this is American. I don't even have to... I don't quite understand. Okay, so... Why are we bringing our babes to the girl's trip? For one. I don't know ne- needs to hear this, but let that boy go. Let that girl go. Let is him there, go. Is there, is there something to do with trust? I can't. Do you know what? Yeah, I cannot stand a my bae, my bae bitch. Separate. Some relationships, the way they move, it's like they were conjoined twin, in, in the spirit conjoinment. You were not born together. You weren't born together. I know you love your bae, but you're always on the motherfucking phone. phone. You're always together. You've now brought them to the girl's trip. I'm, 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 I'm calling you because I need to vent about what's going on with me. Uh, girl, girl, okay, love Even you, girl. Even on the girl's on, trip, you're on, your, you're on your phone. We can't sleep because we are in the United States and he's in London. And mm-hmm. because of, um, of um, time difference, you're calling him at 3 a.m. in the morning. Ka, 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 ka. Are we trying to sleep? Sometimes you need that space. You that need that time space. No, seriously, you I know? can't. I cannot fucking stand on my bae, my bae, bitch. Rest. That's number one. Number two, like, I understand in terms of the safety. When I'm on my guest trip, my tits is out. Wait, so what was this? The friend that said she's questioned her safety or the girl that took her man there? No, the friends. Because funny enough, this happened, you know, I've been catching up on Royal Housewives of Pot- mm-hmm. Potomac. This is the same situation that happened with one of the girls. And on the last day, she brought her husband to the house on a girl's trip. And but it's different because I guess they're married, didn't it? And the house they were staying in was his house. But in this instance, where you're on a girl's trip, pussy is hanging out, breast is hanging mm. out. On top of that, you brought a male friend. Like women were comfortable. I, I can be naked with my wig off, like I'm yeah. with my girls on a holiday. What, like you know, why are you bringing male company that I don't know on the trip? And it's the fact that she she'll probably come with that and go like, oh girl, like it's just him, it's just him. To you and his friend. And and his friend. His friend who's probably just thinking, yo, bro, there's mad pussy in this room. Let me see what I can get. The girls just want to be comfy. They just want to be comfy. And you know what? I, the, you know that one friend that swears he can get pussy? You know there's that one friend that swears like, you know, it's like, oh, my God, the girl. Who said that anybody wants you? Who said you can even dress? Who said that you can you even smell nice or you even look good? Who said anybody fancies you? Who said that they, anybody's gonna fancy you here? Like, and it's just feeling. You bring your you you brought your feeling friend to the trip, full of half naked women in a room. Of course, people are gonna feel feel some type of way. But seriously, are you the type of person in a relationship when you're with your bae? And they have to do everything with you. Shit, I'm like that. Really? Do you know what? I try not to be... I, I want to have a life outside of my partner. But I kind of feel like... You know, I'm a lover girl, innit? I want to yeah. spend a lot of time with my partner and stuff. But I feel like it's important and healthy to have a life and friendships yeah. outside of them. Yeah. That's all you can say. Yeah. I said it hurts for me to say this, but it's coming from my heart. Whew. It's been a long time coming. I've been a really, really strong. Then you want to work this out. And if I'm a I do what you do. Think it's best to you go our separate ways. Tell me why I should stay in this relationship when I'm hurting, baby. What is that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, not I get singing, it now. Don't be singing the whole bridge for you to still not get it. Confessions? No. Burn. Oh. 
Let it burn. Just wear the fuck. Your body don't want you, but you know, gotta, gotta let it go. Cause the party ain't jumping like it used to. Gonna burn my seven. It's okay. It's okay. Victor doesn't have any uh, cultural knowledge. Yeah. Right, guys. Okay, let's move on. We have influencer R Fabulous shared that she relocated to a new undisclosed country to start a new life. Yes. However, only travelled with six hundred and two pound. She didn't account for the luggage costs when she reached the airport and had to spend six hundred pound to take them with her, with around two pounds left. This is this must be cap. She asked her followers to support her new life via donations and the internet had a field day. And she also really revealed that artist Octavian supported her good move. Oh shit, I ain't heard about this. And that they are good people in this world. Octavian was dropped from his label when his ex-girlfriend accused him of I'm battering her. her black and blue like these mood lights. How do we, girl? Now his name is there. Now he's a good Samaritan. Oh. I want to say something, yeah. First things first. F- first things first, big up you for just taking that leap. Yes, agreed. I love, I, I actually, I know this sounds bad, but I love a reckless moment. Mm-hmm. I love a fuck it moment. And I've had many a moments of my life where I've done something as chaotic as that. And I've spent my last... 100 or 200 pound on a mad take. And it turned out to be the best fucking time of your life. Yes, in yeah. this occasion, though, it did not quite work. But I oh. love somebody that's willing to take risks. Yeah. I, I, I can appreciate that. I think in this isolated situation, it was a very, very silly we thing to do. We came to another country. It's a, with, with 600 pound left. And then on top of that, you've had to blow it at the airport. Yeah, that, that's they took tight. luggage. You didn't even read the terms and conditions. This must have been a very reckless thing. So she paid for. I think she she paid for a house or whatever. But you know what? What I can learn from this. So so was it that she was going to said country set up? She knows where she's living, da da da, da or she's just going there to see. No, like, I think she knew where she was living. She had a place to stay. And okay, stuff like okay, that. that's cool then. But in no, terms of in a new place where you don't know anybody, I not think cool that's very it's, it's a very reckless thing to do. Because this is while you're trying to assimilate to the culture there to like just to get yeah. to know the place. You need to go out, you know, you might want to go to clubs, see who you meet there. Now you're yeah, looking for the people in London that you left to, to come, come and, and support, to come you. And support you and go fund me and uh, Monzo sending money. I think my thing is this. I can say I love a reckless, mm. I love a reckless person. And obviously, Miss Our Fabulous, we know that's how I get a fabulous sister. And I yes. proper, proper, I like her. I think she's insane, but I love it. Yeah. I, I love it. I don't give a fuck. Let's not, let's not say she's, she's, a, she's, she's crazy, but I love it. We all love an outgoing character. We, lo- we love it. We love a ghetto fabulous crazy woman like me per per but what i will say is that this was a very reckless thing that she done um a lot of people are like how could you leave how could you leave but i get it because that's the that's the type of dumb shit i would do Mm. i'm not gonna lie i do some very 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 stupid stupid girl shit and i'm just like why the fuck did i do that like i would spend my last 10 pound on uh, singapore fried rice and uh, chili oil and i'll be saying why what's going to eat for the next day but i'm really like i'm gonna make it like it's it's the delusion of me it's it's delusion but it's also like manifestation as well because it's like i know something will come and i will be good i think that's probably what she thought you know she's like i'm gonna make it in this place kind of a thing but it's it's guys i feel like we do need to we need to take precaution but it's a lot of like i see the story all the time like stories of people who have lost spent their last penny on businesses and it hasn't banged or people that have spent investment into something their last coins like desperately trying to change their situation and i know our fab has had quite a difficult couple of months maybe it was out of like desperation that she wanted to change her life and she was hoping for a new change and hoping for a new um, situation made the leap and in this small instance it didn't work out yeah. um and obviously you wouldn't know if she wasn't asking you for money so it's one of those things where do you know what i that's mean that's a point i was gonna make i was gonna say obviously in the uk our pride is as tall as the eiffel tower one thing one thing about us we're gonna call someone a broke bitch and in an, in, in america they will start a GoFundMe for anything anything yeah, i'm everything. trying to get my ass done go fund me in the uk we only think you can use GoFundMe's for funerals for funerals and even that is it's, it's like 
But what you didn't you drive a, a Mercedes when you was alive? Why are you doing a GoFundMe now? You ain't no money for your funeral. Like, I think what it is, yeah, American culture is very giving. Mm. Like everything is service, service, service. Like me and Victor were talking on the way here, but I'm I'm on my way to to America, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around the um, tipping yeah. thing where people like to tip people and stuff. I'm sorry, yeah. The last time I went to America, yeah, like one woman, the way she pressured me into giving tip, it was very uncomfortable. Like, I remember I had the money, I paid with cash and she, and I, I saw there was like 30 pound change. And she was like, are you going to leave the rest for tip? But she said it with such aggression that i was too scared to say no and it wasn't until she left i said did i do that that did my I tati really queen just... my fucking tati queen yeah. and i leave butt chicken and chicken. it wasn't that much but i'm still trying to understand the tipping culture in america did you have the same situation when you flew out there well, so when i flew out there i was just paying by card so but even on the card machines there will even be an option and that's the option they will give it to you on oh mm -hmm. and it will say 10 percent, 15 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent and there'll obviously be the button for no tip. I feel like back in the day, the tipping was obviously in America. It felt it felt like an obligation that you had to do because they they were getting paid chicken change and dust and crumbs and twigs and pebbles. Mm -hmm. But well, obviously, I don't live in America. I don't know. But now I feel like they're making. No, they're not. Okay. From what I remember, I think that they're not like in terms of those service jobs. They're making maybe three, uh, three dollars something. Three dollars. I've had three dollars. I've had four dollars. I've had five dollars. An hour, and the rest they make on tips. And that, but uh, I don't know. It's just that mentality of entitlement. It's like I don't actually need to give you this tip. For I example, thought, yeah. the service could have been shit, and you're still expecting a tip because you have a life outside of this Which is us, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I, American bad boys and girls, you know I fucking love you, I love the US lots, but it's so foreign to us. Mm -hmm. We don't tip, but it's not that we don't have the option, because there is options to tip, and they automatically take 20% um, service, service charge. charge. Anyway, so we don't really- 12.5. Oh, 12 12.5, sorry, 12.5 service charge for any sort of service. It's optional to remove, but it's very ghetto to remove, so we tend to just pay it. Is it ghetto though? Let's have that conversation. Ooh. Sometimes I be wait. Okay. You, you want to pay service charge? Let's no. start. Let's start. Let's start. No. Is it ghetto to remove what the twelve point five service charge? No. Why? This is a service charge. So we're thinking about we're paying for the service. These people are already getting minimum wage, which is probably double what we were just discussing about mm -hmm. them in America. So you'll live but now let's think of the service of my experience in this restaurant your experience it was shit so i'm not gonna pay that service charge i don't care about the embarrassment because once i leave i've left someone else's book to this table 9 p.m <laughs> i don't care about service charge obviously there are sometimes i'm just like yeah no, no. so every time you're like remove that shit no 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 not every time but do you know one thing? When you go to like a group booking and people calculate their um, thing without the service charge and then... That's a finesse, you know, I never thought of that. It's happened several times. They calculate theirs without the service charge then someone's just like, oh, there's still service charge. Like, should we pay the service? Then either we're just like, yeah, no, or one person is just like, all right. I, I ain't gonna, I ain't, I'm not gonna lie. If that was a thing, I'm not paying for this. I removed that service charge. My thing is this, yeah. The difference between American tipping and British £12.5 uh, service charge is that the money of the service charge, nine times out of 10, does not go directly to the staff. Exactly. It goes to the business. So sometimes when I ask them, I say, does this service charge go to directly to yeah, your same, day? Same. They say, no, okay, remove it. Because I'm not gonna add for a uh, Bill Gates and call all the people that's driving yachts. You don't need 12.5 because what did you do? You don't 12.5%. But I think whereas I feel, I would feel more calm about tipping or if that, if if america did more like a service charge thing mandatory 
um, not that mandatory or optional or like top or stuff. I'll, that'll be fine because I know that at the end of the shift, they split it between themselves. Mm-hmm. It's their own pocketed money. Okay, that makes sense. It's going directly to the people who are working and and toiling and froiling in the in okay. the in the restaurants in the place. Whereas there, it's not. But I still feel sometimes that uh, when you're wearing a dress and shoe, you know, when yeah. you're wearing a bag. You don't. You want to keep the maintenance of oh, the yeah. aesthetic. So sometimes, I just pay it. And if I'm with someone that's paying, you better leave that thing on. Imagine, imagine you're going out with somebody, and they said, "Oh, yo, like, can I? Can we remove the service charge, please?" Like, oh, you better just ask for that card machine. You better just ask for that card machine. And tap that cord. You better tap that cord. You better tap that motherfucking. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You better tap that motherfucking cord. Don't you dare. You want to remove it? Tap out. Tap. Only I can do that in my own. T- no, but the thing is, if you're gonna do that, do that in your own time. Yeah. Don't do that around we'll, me. We'll do it discreetly. How how can There's you no discreetly? Way, when you were just sat across the table. Can you remove this? You know what I was <laughs> Oh wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I'm just sorting out a surprise for you, innit? Yeah. <laughs> so let me take off the service charge, please. Like, like bring a cake or something to the table. Like, <laughs> wait, so, nah, that's that's too dead. I but love yeah, this road voice. Nah, do you know that's my favorite. Like sometimes when you say it, it turns me on. I, I get that from a lot. It does. Yeah. <laughs> you should keep it on forever. Forever. I'd. Yeah. I'd. You should keep it on forever. But yes, I don't have any I fucking clue where this conversation went. It really went into a rabbit hole. What did we start what did we start with? We started with something. Is it girls trip? Oh yeah, our fabulous. Anyways, guys, I feel like this year is the year of being serious about ourselves. Yeah. Serious but also free. Serious but also free. Mm. Let's be more structured. But also, let's have a motherfucking good time. Know when it's time to relax and have fun. Because some people don't know how to actually have fun, you know. I think it's the fear of the future a lot of times. Fear of the future. Fear of money and losing it. I have that. I have that fear. I I do, but I also don't. When it comes to buying nice things. I will buy it and be like, so, when when is the next buck going to come? When is the... Prada Lufa, and I'll come to you and be like, I'm just so scared to move out because I'm just thinking like, what if I lose this money? Will it that? Uh, how much me. were these things? I don't eight hundred or something. Mm-hmm. That eight hundred or something could have gone towards a deposit. Yes, that's different. Yes, that's too. But that's like me, impulsive. I do have an impulsive, impulsive buying moment. You saw yeah. me today at B and M, guys. Can I just Ooh. say, I fucking love B and M with F- B and M is my favorite shop if in the whole world. If there's one brand world. partnership that probably needs to happen, it's Madame Joyce and B&M. Yeah. Yeah, I better come Ooh. get one of these. Listen, B&M is my favorite fucking shop of all time. Like, seriously. I go to B&M every other day. Like, the B&M is quite close to my house. I would just walk in. Wow. I've never seen this soap before. Wow. Basically, for the Americans that don't know what B&M is, it's literally like a... Like, it's kind of like Home Depot. It's Home like Depot. Home Depot. No, what's the other place? That's Asda in the UK, but it's owned by... Walgreens? Target. Wal- yeah, Target. Target. It's like a Target with every fucking thing in one place. If you want to buy clothes, at, if you want to buy clothes... It's there. That, that, there. If you want food, it's, it's there. there. If, if you want, want to buy house products, it's, it's there. there. Electronics, you, it's there. there. So if, uh, do you know what, yeah? If you want to buy slippers, it's there. If you want to buy plants, I just bought a cactus today. A cactus. I buy all my plants from B&M. Even if you want condoms, they're there. They're there. Alcohol they're is there. there. Suitcases, Perfume. there. Perfume. Mayonnaise, there. And some American brands as well. If you want to buy a lamp, is there. Is if you there. want to do painting, is there. there. If you want to do home If you need a new laundry basket, is there. there. If you need to buy um a fan, is, is there. there. If you need tampons, is, is there. there. If you want to buy a sh- new shower rod, is, is there. there. If you need chengum, is, is there. there. Thank you. Uh. <laughs> 
B and M is like. B and M is my favorite fucking. Nah, B and M is my favorite place in the world. I love B and M. Anyways, I don't even know where that got to. Anyways, I just wanted to have a moment to, to just love B and M. I just want to let B and M know that I love them. I don't have any idea where that conversation was going. There was a point I was trying to make. Sorry, I was just daydreaming about B and M. I really like, do love B and M. There was a con. No, there was somewhere I was going somewhere with this. Guys, I've got ADHD. Excuse me. Um, I'm not Nama. I'm here trying to look up like I knew where you were going. Going like, like you're like, um, was she going this way? Is she going that way? I was talking about B and M. I was talking about we were doing something in B and M. I was saying something about when we went to B and M today. We were looking for stuff for your office. No. I can't fucking remember where I was going with that conversation, yeah, you know. Is your Why Ray did hitting? we smoke it? Huh? Is your Ray hitting? Do you think that's what it is, guys? We're drinking Ray and Nephews today. That might what someone was like, Oh yeah, Joyce is drinking coffee. <laughs> Every, this ain't girl, this ain't coffee. This is this is this isn't a Starbucks coffee. Cups. This is a coffee this is a coffee curb. Are we drunk? Fucking hell. That I'm was quick. Yet. We better. Y'all better come get one of these. No, what was I fucking saying? Anyways, let me move on. So I'm gonna go into hot new releases. So guys, we mm -hmm. have risk. We have re. First of all, let me just stop here. Yeah. We've decided to rejig the structure. The structure. Of, yes. So we've got hot new releases first now, because it's 2023 in the purple you know, team. Can I just say yeah? Go on. The other day when we were on the phone and mm -hmm. you were doing. I remember you were just talking. I was like, I was thinking, is she talking to me? Did you you were talking to yourself, but you were just talking about the show. You were like, okay, cool. We're not being. Should I, should, I, should we scrap? We're not being. Da, da, da. Just talking, just talking. I was just so like the warmth that was in my heart, just hearing you care so much about your shit, and like, you know, it's not like you have to go to someone to talk about your you you created this. So you were almost having the conversation with yourself, and I was just there, just like, man. I love you. Bone apple tea. Thank you. I love you. I love you. Now, I wanted to restructure because obviously, we're always trying to see how to gain attention and mm. just, yeah, I just wanted to rejig because I thought, like, let's do some hot topics at the beginning. Yeah. And then instead of it constantly being at the very end, we'll then have the hotter, hotter topics yeah. at the end. So we have one part at the beginning, one part at the end, so that everybody yeah, can have a good time yeah. throughout. You know what I mean? And also, I, I, um, I didn't realize that was a thing on the on on the YouTube, thank you. I didn't realize that was a thing on YouTube where they look at the times that people um, have like basically clocked in and clocked out of the- video. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Where, where people's attention lies yeah, yeah definitely retention is very very important but anyways let's move on to some hot topics so guys we have decided to move hot new releases to the first part of the show so we are going to kick so, in I'm thinking of wendy williams hot topics this is cnt let's get into hot, hot topics this. He just like Scott yeah let's get into hot <laughs> we got wendy we got wendy every big fucking up. time i feel so sorry for wendy man She's going through it right now. Let's move on to hot topics. hot topics. Hot new releases. Hot new releases. So, first things first. Maya Jama to host upcoming series of Winter Love Island starting January 16th. Here Guys, when this comes out, we... We need to rise as a nation. When is it? 16th. So, we've got basically a week from now, from when this comes out, for Love, Love Island Winter to come up. How, How are you feeling? I'm gassed. I'm very excited. I definitely am going to do something. I want to be more proactive in the conversations. You so I definitely will be doing commentary on Winter Love Island, yeah. 100%. Can you pass me the appetizer? I definitely, but you know what? Yeah, Maya Jamma, I can't wait to see her in action, boo. Yeah. I can't wait to see her in action. I love Maya. This is so her tea. And think about it. We've been talking about Maya hosting this thing actually for ages now. They were looking at us in the street. When streets. they brought in Laura Whitmore, we were just like, no no laura You're we love you though but this is not your destiny this is not your destiny this maya is, is this she's perfect yeah even when uh they had a if editor puts it up they had a promo video for winter love islands and she was on a horse, horse ball. I'm, I'm quite interested to see what that means the horse and ball like a rodeo I don't know what that means because usually I, I, I doubt they'll change like the vibe of the, the vibe villa. of it. I'm not sure what it means, but honestly, just she was just riding that horse like a like a cock. Hmm. 
She was just riding that horse like a cock. I said, Do you remember yes. the TikTok we saw today about Davina McCall's idea for a midlife love island full of, you know, people in the older market? And they've been there, you know, she, she, oh, she really sold that thing. She said, to, she sold it to ITV, let me host this thing for you. A midlife love island, people, they've been through divorces. Some of them are widows. Some of them are, you know, still working that, in the professional mm -hmm. industry. That, that, I feel like that will be the tea. I like I this young, messy good. one, but mm -hmm. people that are that grown, you know, some of them might have trauma that we can like laugh at, you know? Yeah, just be laughing at people's trauma, yeah. Yeah. We're gonna do that. Oh yeah, I'm so here for my online. No, life. I'm so here. I'm so excited for her. I'm so excited for this new season. I'm really loving. And the... you already know if Maya like went on Love Island as a contestant, she would have been in it, girl. Yeah, she would have. If she wasn't Maya Jama, she would have come in and stole the hearts of everyone. And then she would have been Maya Jama. Again, you know, some people's destiny is just to win. When is when is made for you is made for you. When it's made for you is made for you seriously but i'm very excited i'm very excited about the new contestants i'm kind of really glad about the conversations outside of love island i mean love island but outside of love the show that have been happening in terms of like what people feel is going to happen when they go into love island you, and then what happens when they come out and you're not the, the instant celebrity yeah. that you think you are yeah. i know will and jovi did a fantastic documentary you guys should check it out um, for Channel 4 about life after Love Island. Mm. And, you know, they said that they have over, like, 40,000 applicants a year that try to come on the show. And not everybody makes it. And there was that thing with Max. <sighs> Y'all already know what it is. You know Max that came on our show, Max Belegde, a.k.a. Messy Maxine, my baby, that allegedly some of the contestants are in, you know, <sighs> fake relationships. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. I believe it, but it's allegedly. Yeah, let's just say allegedly. Allegedly, there's some people in the fake relationships. I know there's some people that's in real. I'm sorry, um, India and Dami are in such a real loving relationship. I, just... I love them. They are, like, like when I went to, when we went to um, Maz's dinner, and I, I saw, was just about to talk about that. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm actually obsessed with I'm obsessed with them. India was whispering and I was, I don't know what she was saying, but she's like, baby, we're gonna put up and all kind of I was like, that's me. Like, I'm a slut for my baby. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a slut for my baby. You better it's home time. It's time to go home. I'd be thing. under the table doing shit. Yeah, gosh. it's time to go home. My favorite thing is just taking their hand and just yeah oh and then we just look at each other bone apple tea. do you know what yeah there's something there's something <laughs> a bit sexy about outdoor not sex but outdoor is we getting into touching it? no because i like you know the you know i like the idea the risk factor of doing naughty stuff outside yeah not <laughs> flat naked pussy open yeah no no, no. On the beach, Shire, but <laughs> 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 but yeah, but they come get one of these. Mm. <laughs> but you know the naughtier aspects of things, like where you're just touching, you squeeze, you, and it's just like oh, we gonna get caught. Like I let's love nah. A bit of ten just I love a bit of tension. We don't risk. have we don't have enough tension these days. I don't think we do because everybody's just like see. boom, boom, boom. I like sexual tension. Like, let's look across the room for each other and imagine that we're gonna. Where I just is... want to see you strip right now, cause it's late, babe. I want to get. Uh, uh, Let me ask and... you a question. Oh my god, we, are we about to really go there? Publicly. Mm -hmm. Where is the worst or riskiest place that you have? You, you don't. You, you. Let me ask you again. Pull up in. The... Publicly. Where is the riskiest place that you've got on Fricky? In a lift. In a lift? At the train station. I... Yeah. At the train. So basically. Was, a... this, was this like an underground station where it's like it goes up and up or no, was, it was this like DLR? National, National Rail. Like, National Rail will never walk with me again. They will never work with me. <laughs> they will never work with me because, yeah, basically, it was Bedford Station, National Rail. 
yeah, um, near my house. So obviously, you know, when you're younger, yeah, the problem is when you're younger and you are sexually, you, you, you're sexually active, you want to have sex, but they ain't know where to go. And there's no money. Because you can't go to their house, they still with their parents. You yeah. can't go to your house, you still, you still with, with your, your parents. parents. And you can't go to the hotel because they ain't got no money. Money. And you ain't got no money. So you have to find places. We have to go to the park. We have to go to the park. <laughs> Where else is there to go? <laughs> you don't have a car. You ain't got a car. Let's go to the park. And Let's... that's why in our teen years, the stories would just be, oh yeah, he fingered her in the park. He fingered her in the park. Yeah, Chloe Lee. There's nowhere to go except the park. There's one day I got fingered in the park and they even caught me. That's another story for another day. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I had sex in the lift chair. And um, obviously I could never do it now because I haven't got that flexibility anymore, mm. you see. So I was literally like bent over. You know the park is, it's like, have, you know the, not the park, you know the fucking thing is like having, it's in a box. It's like yeah. a box, in it? So I was like, Bend over and touch to <laughs> I couldn't do it. Why? I couldn't do it now. What's the freakiest place you in? Oh. Why are you asking me questions you don't know? So I'd say in terms of like freakiest and a risk in an Uber. As if somebody's driving and can see y'all. Possibly. You, ha- but you had. But we were using my jacket to like. Yeah. Not sex. Just to fundling. <laughs> Girl, do you want to come to my hotel? But the key, baby. the key is to like. No, so, we no, we ain't about to teach people how to have. To have all in a Uber Victor. No, let me just give you some tattoos. <laughs> let me just give you some tattoos. Go on. So I, I was sat behind the driver. Mm-hmm. So that, because you know, if the driver wants to like reverse and look that way, bagged straight away. So I was sat behind and. The doing this half up. So you, you, you blocked the road. They blocked <laughs> the view of the driver. And I, and I, and I just, I just sat. My world was rocking. Girl, don't wanna come to, to my, my hotel, hotel. baby. You're building a vibe, girl. Don't the way you carry yourself, girl. And I wanna get with you because it's a cutie. Baby, do you come to my hotel? <laughs> <laughs> now, when I was younger, I was a fiend. Like, there was no way to have sex, but even I feel like the older I've got, the less sex I've had. I have because I'm now I'm now I'm more focused on like the emotional side of mm. things. Like I found myself to enjoy the whole experience that leads up to sex. Like I feel like, like I get turned on em- like emotionally as well as physically. I'm not just like. Yeah, like one, one night stands aren't my I thing. I could know, they're not my thing at all. I need to know you. I need to know you. I need to know what you like. I need to know you. I need to know your vibe. I need to know you. I need to know if you're right. I need to know you. I need to know you. Yeah. That gave Timberland. Fed <laughs> <laughs> up in the club like a... Yeah. I'm going to jump in. Come up in the club looking all good. Come up in the club looking all sweet. All these bitches wanna look at me. I know these bitches wanna be me. J to the O, mm. you know you got the flow. Every time I see you, mm. it's ready, steady, go. And with VK, mm. and we don't play. And when I step into mm. the sea, you know it's no games. J to the O, mm. looking all crispy. Yeah, looking popping, wispy. Yeah. Check it out. Eyelashes, wispy. Yeah, it's a bit of eyelashes, wispy. You see that ray got me tipsy. You what? wanna link me? <laughs> okay, cool. Buy our mixtape is coming out rather rel- relatively, Perfect. relatively soon. This ray and nappies. This is why I don't drink this stuff, you know. Because it's definitely it lean- so Licky licky, like a linker. Licky licky, guys. If you haven't got your drink, make sure you pour it. If Ray and Nephew want to sponsor an episode, they can. They have sponsored so many times. This I got this bottle. Thank you for Ray and Nephew. Thank you. Russian, Russians, my babes, man. We got Russian every bumbuckler fucking time. Obviously, 
fucking um what were we fucking talking about so you then? don't play games anymore what do you mean i don't play games in the new structure no we do oh hot new releases guys we're still on fucking hot new releases come on guys come okay, on okay we need to stop going off on these tangents let's forget yeah we actually you're like we actually got you're like me by the way you don't help my tangent control because i really do be racking and swaying and swaying and racking and never okay okay <laughs> what <laughs> Right, hot new release. Flow will be flow will be on a remix of Stormzy's Hide and Seek. It was come. It's come out today. I can I just say big up fucking flow. Big up fucking Obviously flow. Named enemy top one hundred to look out for. I, I don't. I, I can't remember so they the headline. Have, but yeah, it was, it was enemy, enemy top one hundred. Same with Bella, our good sisters, both family friends of the show, and I just mm. I'm just so proud of them. Have flow been on? Flow's on. Oh, yeah. Bella's oh, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on top of that, they have a remix with Hide and Seek with Stormzy. Have you listened to it? We both listened to it. You have to pretend like I haven't oh, okay, with okay, you. Okay, okay. Cool, cool. Girl. Do it again, do it again. Have you heard the song? Girl. Oh! Oh, girl the shining. Oh, girl the shining. I f- like, why aren't they on the original track? They should have just been on the original track. Phenomenal. Um, I love the girls, their vocality. Is that a word? Vocalization. The the blend. I think it's the blend for the me. The blends, yeah. And that, that they work so well. That's one thing that in the UK, don't get me wrong, people, obviously in the UK, we can fucking sing. We have great vocalists out here. We but do. But in terms of being blended, sometimes Working together, our choirs yeah. and our collectives don't have that. Because in America, when you hear an American choir, it literally sounds like the same person one just voice, singing yeah. different parts. Yeah. The blend. And I get that from Flo. I love, I feel like their voices work so well together. Their harmonies, the range. The range. Like, when that, you know what kills me? I love Georgia. Georgia's someone that I love dearly. And you hear Georgia's speaking voice and Georgia speaks very high and very soft. So she's like, hi guys, my name is Georgia. Hi. Hi I'm guys, Georgia. yeah, my name is Georgia. So let me not, I don't want to Like, very, very soft spoken. And then she starts to do the... No! <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, the, the, the vocal range of these girls are insane. Like, when I heard Georgia doing those deeper... Never liked your mama, so I guess she's blacked. Like when I hear her come in here and it's rich as well, like it's that's where her voice sits. I speak, y'all. You may be crying, but boy, I'm not. Boy, I'm not. Boy, I'm not. You may be crying, but boy, I'm not. That was someone was off, but it's okay. It, it was, was me. me. It was me. It was me. Oh. It was me. I'm, I'm the <laughs> I couldn't quite catch the harmony, hey. but no, it was it was fantastic. It was fantastic. I loved them. This remix, and I feel like this was such a perfect song for them to remix because so, so beautiful. Obviously, they um there was a thing on Twitter where. Um, they were like, oh, you know, our dream collab is Stormzy on Capital Extra. And then Stormzy was like, when you're ready, girls. I was thinking, okay, cool. It's going to be an original song, a feature. But this just integrates so well. And you know, you guys know how I feel about that song anyways. Like, it was on repeat when I first came out. Just having Flo come onto the album, onto the song, sorry. And just adding a different depth to the song the vocal range the harmonies bringing stuff out of the original song that i never heard or i never knew that could be placed french kiss big up fucking flow man what oh, a fantastic just, year they had last the year where george is like you'll be okay oh girl you're shining no where the line is it's moment in timing when you so names are lining it's me you confide in seeking and hiding so that it and in you thank you 
not us with our eyes, just saying, are we continuing? Are we, continue? are we doing harmonies? To, I was gonna hit the high. Yeah. But I said, let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. Don't worry, we'll come back to that. We'll come back. We'll come back to that one. Okay. Then, final hot new release. Jay Huss has announced on Instagram that he'll be releasing an album in the middle of the year. Well, we'll see if it comes out. So it's the first one. This is the... the let the, don't 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 let the Rays beat your ass. Ooh. Don't let Ray and his nephew beat you. And the and the, and the what? Thank you. <laughs> All right. And this is the small one as well. We've nearly finished it. Sixty three percent. Bomba pussy fast clot. I say fast clot. Bomba pussy casket pussy girl clot. Thank you. Yes. Jay Huss, I'm very excited to see him back. I think that if you're coming back, please come back because you've got out of your rut. I don't feel like he should come back if people are forcing him to come back. I yeah. love Jay Huss, but I feel like the last album that he done, he didn't drop a, mu a, a, a music video to any of the songs. I don't believe he did any touring around the song. Yeah. Please, we need the whole experience. Don't just think you can just drop an album and go because you want to you want to attain to people. Yeah. Please be in the mood to tour. Please be in the mood to do some music videos. We want to see came in a black one, we're left in a white one. That's the energy we need. And I love, love, love Jay Huss. He's the and we've given him guys, you know, there's some people that we love. We give them grace. We're like, we love you, we yeah. love your music, we're gonna give you grace. But this if you're gonna come back, please don't just come back willy nilly. Yeah. Don't come back willy nilly. And yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a conversation that I think, and this isn't about Jay Huss, of course not. He's one, he's of, one of, yeah, he's fucking Jay Huss. He's Jay Huss. But it's a conversation where, of, of the mediocrity of the music industry oh. in this day, and oh. how some artists feel comfortable thinking they don't need to give us the full package of an artist. Oh. It comes with the songs, but yeah, then it also come comes with the live performances. Please, please. And you're not at Beyonce stage where you can just drop an album or fuck off. She's done her work. She's set the foundation. She has sons. She's done it. Now that artistry is growing, please be, be an all round artist. I think for me in anything, if you're gonna do something, be an all rounder. Yeah. Like Dave is a perfect example of artistry to me where you are a rapper, um, you are a musician, you are a producer, you play you play um, guitar, you play yeah. piano. I love people who take their craft in all of their elements. Mm -hmm. So not just being a singer, but you don't know how to perform. Right. Um, t there's a lot of singers now that are good in the studio and good vocalist, but when they Put get on, on the stage, stage... You're standing like this, Mike. <laughs> you're just standing. You are just standing. Seriously, let's behave and respect ourselves. Yeah. Seriously. But yes, um, if J Huss comes back, please, I just need the full, I need the full artistry. Don't give me willy nilly. I don't just, don't just give me half and be like, okay, because I'm J Huss, I will accept it because I'll talk about it on this show. I'm <laughs> serious. It's CNT baby. Right, let us move on. Without further ado, I'd like to finally introduce my guest of the day. Obviously, you already fucking know what the Shut fuck up. it come is, man. Bumba Clark and come that. On, yeah, bro. we got someone very fucking special come in the motherfucking on, stew. Woo. We got on, a bro. fucking studio person in the stew. Woo. My bro, every fucking Like, obviously, time. you already know what it is. We got a bad boy in the motherfucking every building. Every fucking time. Gang on, shit, you already on, fucking know what it is. He's been here before and that. Listen, yeah, shut man. down the game. Yeah, you man. know, obviously we had a good time and that. And we're back again to have a good time. <laughs> Why was I going to start actually doing the beat? <laughs> because we in sync like Siamese. I just got... Obviously, you know we're having a good time and that. <laughs> This is about to kill it. Guys, he needs ni new. Ooh, Thank you. Don't let the Ray beat your ass. <sighs> you got a finger in that pussy. Bye. <laughs> Guys, without further ado, I would love to introduce he needs no introduction. I'd love to introduce he needs no introduction. Right. 
Okay, he is everybody's favorite TikToker. He is a content creator, Amen. a supermodel. He's super to me, oh, and he's gonna oh. he's about to be super in the world because he got that new new coming up. Guys, it's none other than one of my favorite fucking people. Oh, and you know what's so you. mad? When I kept saying that, I say that often. And I've said it from the beginning in relation to your content. Like Victor Kunda is one of my favorite content creators. Yeah. And it's a pleasure to even say he's one of my favorite friends. Don't faint, come back. Can you keep up? Baby boy is to lose my breath. Baby boy is to lose my breath. Baby boy is to lose my... I love you, man. Oh! <laughs> Guys, you already know what it is. It's motherfucking Victor Bumba Clap Kunda. Come on, brah, brah, brah. Kimmy, Kimmy. Boom, bidi, boom, bidi, crack, crack, crack. I'm a motherfucking man. Boom, bidi, crack, crack, crack. Boom, bidi, boom, bidi, crack, crack, kiddy, kiddy. Booty, boom, bidi, crack, crack, kiddy, kiddy. Booty, boom, bidi, crack, crack, kiddy, kiddy. Booty, boom, bidi, crack, crack. Ah, ah. I hope you guys did your freestyle with that because that was the opportunity for you to do your freestyle. That was an open duet challenge. That was an open duet challenge. <laughs> Victor, how have you been? Welcome back to the motherfucking show. Thank you. Funny enough, yesterday someone was like, can we get Victor back? And I was like, if only you knew. <laughs> I feel good. I feel good, my love. Um, Yeah, this the start of this year has been a good one. It, was, it wasn't the best end to last year. Yeah. But yeah. New year, new canvas, new me, new body count. But yeah, I feel this is the time to really, like you said, take my shit serious, but also know how to have fun. Yeah, of course. And I know that obviously something that I would love for you to share, you know, you did a skit recently about the content creator space and stuff. I know you were in a bit of a content rat. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about that. So, and it's, it's crazy because people, I guess they wouldn't notice because they just see what I post and they're just like, oh, wow, fab, you know, uh, moments, 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 you're giving, you're serving looks. However, guys, I felt like I was lost for a bit. Wow. Because being... You know, I am still so young in my career. There are influencers out here who have been doing their mothers. thing. Mothers, our mothers. Our mothers and fathers. Yeah. And after, what, a year and a bit, I'm already feeling drained. I'm already fe feeling tired because it got to a point where I had stopped doing my original content because all I had to keep delivering was ads, was ads. And that was taking all the energy out of me so when it was time to think of something organically, I would be too tired or it, 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 yeah, for me, it almost felt like I could only think of a good creative concept when I had to, mm. when I needed to do it for a brief or something. So I just took a bit of time off, even though it was burning me every single second, obviously got to the point where, and you people, you don't know, you think that sketch was just com comedic effect. Guys, I was talking about what the fuck I've been through. And I really felt like I needed to put that out just as an original means of how I used to communicate through my content. You know, not me coming on like, guys, so, um, you know, recently I've just been feeling like, da da da. Crying how, on the camera and that. Do you know what I mean? How I communicate is I make people laugh and yeah. then I make them think, oh shit. Like in my old sketches, when I'll be talking about real issues that are happening in the world, people used to always say, yeah, because you're laughing. But then when you really think about it, you're like, oh, damn. Well, obviously, people didn't know that that sketch was me talking about myself. But in terms of the whole people losing interest, I know all of the pictures and stuff, you know, all the exterior about me, you know, was keeping people interested. However, I genuinely did feel like people were forgetting about me because I was losing my organic self. Obviously, I'm a fashion boy, but I'm also a like comedian at heart. I'm not a serious person. <laughs> so, 
yeah, I needed to say I felt like people were forgetting about me. I was losing followers, which I genuinely was. However, obviously the person on the call answering the laptop, that was all comedic effect, but everything in the bedroom well, was real. Yourself, yeah. However, I've had that conversation with other people about what we're gonna do to bring me back. Her. I think it's an interesting conversation because it's so different to what people see. Like people see Victor and they're like, yeah, Victor's doing amazing things and stuff. And yeah, like amazing, you know, the ads is coming in, the money's coming in, but it really, created a stunt in your creative flair and i feel like that's what happens to a lot of people that decide to take their creative hobbies and turn it into and, and monetize yeah. it starts to become a business and you lose the love for it because mm -hmm. it now feels like a job yeah i feel like that's what happens to quite a lot even a lot of artists a lot of musicians that you know they came into something because they love music but when it's like music but it's like oh, you have to sing the same song that you've sang 400 times ago, 400 times, but you've yeah. got an archive of all this other music and you have to re-sing that music because it's the hit. And it's mm -hmm. like, it just, you, you just don't feel as passionate as you do towards it because it's misdirected in how to make money instead of it being just fun and free. Rather than the making money just happening along the organic process. Exactly. They now make it about this process is to make you money rather than the you know the, the the whole ethos of putting your content out in the first place you enjoy yeah. doing it you're yeah. like this is content i can put this out to the masses you never stop doing it for the masses because that's why you started the bag comes along the way absolutely and just to talk about the rut you was in obviously you wasn't posting content you didn't feel like you you didn't feel in your normal space for yeah. everyone that is in a rut because not many people are in the content space but everybody's had that time where they're just like i was passionate about this thing that i'm doing whether that's a course or whether that's a um whether that's a job and all of a sudden i'm in a rut where i'm not as passionate as when i first started how did you get yourself out of that and it's like boom i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna create this series change your motherfucking environment okay and uh, it's, it's it's crazy because it's not like oh move out of the house you're in and you know go in a new space because you did da, 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 da. it's not that easy but some environment isn't only physical environment is mental mm -hmm. as well sometimes you need to change your mental environment if there's some if there are things that were just clouding your mind you need to you know savagely enough you need to just find a way to just clear that you need to you need to, like find a way to at least try and clear it or if there are means that get your mind off it you know obviously it's not gonna end it per se but change your environment your mental environment physical environment is even better because sometimes when you're in like a new physical space what you're seeing translates in your mind so it looks like a new canvas to yeah. you so then in your mind you're like Whew, my mind feels clear, let me just think. And also I would say, start again like you don't know what you're doing. Because if you come in like, oh yeah, you know what, you know, I've done this before, you know, let, let's just try, let's just try bang this out, let's try bang it out. It's one walk. Cole worked. Cole worked. It won't work because yes, you're right, you have been there before and the journey that you're going on now is the reason why you're here. So you need to you need to come new, you need to come fresh. Like you're almost like like you're learning again, even yeah. though you know what to do and you're thinking less of, oh, I've done this before, you know, I know what makes a viral video, da da da. Just think about the creativity. I think learning to be, relearning to be a student is so important. I feel like sometimes we are amazing at what we do, but I think because we are so focused on the grandeur of things, we forget to go back to the basis sometimes. Sometimes being a, a student means going back to ask questions to people. Revising. Like revising, going to friends or that might be in the same space as you or the same course as you to understand what it is that you're missing. I always say somebody's molehill is another person's mountain. I feel like the best, I remember when you were coming to me with this situation, you were like, 
<sighs> this is bit, oh my god i've lost followers i thought that today. i said did you post and he said no no and i said you just need to stop go back get back to the basics yeah. it's not about the grandeur of things it's about going back to the basics of when you used to post regularly and when you used to post having a good time and going back to your skits that was the origin of victor sometimes you need to go back to your basics sometimes you need to go back to where and why you started something mm. your why and just rebuild from there so really starting again is amazing changing your environment is amazing i feel like we're in an ama we're in a great place where Everything is at the touch of a button. Button. We can <laughs> we can read from our house. We can do a course from our house. We can do uni from our house. Mm. We can I feel like sometimes we need to move. It's interesting. I was watching this thing and this lawyer, he was in a car and he said the best times were he some he would have a driver drive him all around. Um, he not, he's not going anywhere, but he's like, the best times I think was when it's in my car. Mm. If you notice, the best times I have my ideas when I'm on the train. Like the best creative concerts I have, you know, I'm planning this big show. The best time, it's not at home I have my concerts, yeah. it's on a train. I put my music in and I'm like, okay, cool. Sometimes you need that other environment. Sometimes your best ideas and concepts and revisions is in a park, it's yeah. somewhere else. It doesn't have to be somewhere paid. When we're saying go somewhere, it doesn't mean go to Dubai. It means go to a different Just environment that can inspire day. me. Go to the park yeah. in the daytime. Don't Obviously, be a doggy. Yeah. Don't be a doggy. <laughs> don't go to the park to. Um, yes. Don't go in the nights. Go in the day. All the ladies go in the in the daytime where people are around. Don't go mm. into a secluded be, to be safe. But yeah, go into a place. Go to a the, a gallery. Go to the free museum, things that will mm. it can reignite and re expire you in places because it's not every day home, home, home. I get sick of being at home, yeah. I'll be honest. My most creative concepts are literally when I'm walk going for walks, when I'm on a train to somewhere, something will come into my head and I'm like, oh shit, that's yeah. great. Formulating ideas, formulating concepts. Yeah. Leave your house. Go my to the ideas always come to me when I'm talking to people talk to people community i feel like everyone should have a community within their creative space so now we're talking about work so whatever you do whether that's if you're an engineer if you're a, if you're a nurse trying to be a nurse if you are a whatever you do you should have a community of people who are looking for a common goal like-minded like like-minded yeah. people within that space so you and me, engineer to engineer, nurse to nurse, DJ to DJ. Mm. People should be in a space creatively that people understand your struggles and your mistakes to help you and et cetera, et cetera. And also understand your ideas. And ideas, we can bounce off yeah. each other and use collective intelligence to either work on it together or, you know, right now as a group, let's pour into you because yeah. this is something that clearly you care about and we all have the shared knowledge to make it better. 100%. Community the is same everything. same way, like, even the ideas for that sketch. Guys, I had, like, the base idea. I said it on the phone to Joyce and we were just bouncing back and forth. Literally, literally. When we're coming up with concepts like, yeah, you sh this, 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 and we literally created the idea of Victor being, Victor being the mastermind, but me just like, how about this? It's that, but this does, well, why do we tweak that? Just, you know, do you know what I mean? To make it and to the know, optimal. Oh my gosh, this is so crazy. One thing I've come to deep here mm -hmm. is that sometimes you will get fantastic ideas from people that aren't in your field yourself. For example, my friend, he's obviously a, f a fashionista, all of that. But mm -hmm. when I told him like, oh yeah, I'm thinking of doing a sketch for this and da -da -da, this is how it's gonna go. I told him the storyline and he'll be like, oh, do you know what would be so fab if you mm -hmm. did this? And I think about it, I'm like, oh shit, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we get caught up in this mentality of, okay, but do you do this? So why are you talking to me? <laughs> yeah, seriously, you don't know nothing. Sit the fuck down, sir. Exactly, yeah. and, we, and sometimes we take constructive criticism or even advice as someone trying to school you. But no, because you, you technically you don't have to listen, but it's still just another contribution. Write it down. Definitely. If it doesn't come for this one, maybe it will come for something. That is 
amazing wow the drink is hitting me i'm trying to me too the drink is hitting me but with that being said guys i have something for you so this year i'm really i feel like the year this is the year of growth Mm -hmm. and i feel like this is the year of growth not just for myself but for the bad boys and girls and i said to everybody that i want to i love that you call them the bad boys and girls because that's what the fuck we are do you know what it was it just one day i said it and it just stuck i was like yeah obviously you know i'm talking to the bad boys and the bad girls and i was like then oh. it just kind of stuck. So yeah, we got the motherfucking bad boys and bad girls. Big up yourselves every fucking time. And you guys were talking to me on Instagram and you were basically telling me about all your New Year's resolutions and things like that. And it got me thinking. And I was like, I want to support you guys in your journeys and I want to support you guys in your growth because this for me is the year of growth. Yeah. And that's growth in mindset, growth in spiritual, growth in physical. Your ass must grow, your breast must grow. The only thing that should not grow is your stomach. Let it reduce in Jesus' name. Mine as well. Let it go down in Jesus' name. But Is Joyce fat shame in? Can a fat bitch fat shame? Yes, actually. Okay, I'm fat shaming. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Everything must grow this year. Everything must grow this year. So I want to... Even the cuck. Yeah. It, 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 it's already big. <laughs> Sorry, I'm stuttering. It's already big. Though. It's already big, though. Not that I've seen it or anything. Seen you know that, man. Don't do that voice ever again. I'm sorry. Just put my pussy on it. Yes. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So obviously, this is the upgrowth, and I wanted to support you guys in that. So this season, this year, I wanted to have a word of the week. Mm. So every week, we will have a word that focuses on everything that you guys sent me in. All your New Year's resolution, we are gonna talk about them a word in a week and we are going to have a structure of what I and my producers think can help you guys follow that journey. So we we try and grow. So this week's word of the week, which was a very, very big one. Oh, no, no, is, no. Okay. Is consistency. What are the week this week is consistency? And I feel like this topical conversation that we just had is the best segue into this new mm. week. Because guys, everyone is really trying to grow and find themselves and sense and self-identify their issues and trying to resolve them. And I know everybody has a big issue with consistency, including myself. I was flogged last week. They flogged me last week on the voice notes. You were flogged. She flogged me. As you should be. She flogged me, but it was all love and I love you. And thank you guys for always checking me and holding me accountable. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Ooh, accountability is going to be one of the words for the week. Don't worry. That one is loading up. So the definition of consistency is acting or doing the same thing over... Wait. mm. Thank you, Jesus. Acting or done in the same way over time, especially so as it to be fair or accurate. So consistency is doing the same thing in the same way for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So routinely doing things over and over again. That's something I really struggle with. Yeah. And cool. let's talk about it. So So I've got a relevant quote here. Relevant quote. Success isn't always about greatness. It's about consistency. Consistent hard work leads to success. Greatness will come. And I really do believe in that. I really do believe like consistently showing up, consistently creating content, consistently going to the gym, consistently doing something, whatever your target is, working on it consistently will allow you to be successful in that department doing it once or doing it once every four months or once every couple of months i don't feel like is the way forward to success showing up every week for the show is my success making sure that it's booked and ready to go is the success of the show when i first started i was so consistent but i really fell off i can't lie when i tried to fall off but i came back per Oh, consistency, that word triggers me. Why? Because that's where I felt like I lost myself, innit? it? Mm-hmm. Because I wasn't consistent. Well, we are going to help you because we've got some tips. So, 
first thing what first one first first, first one first. first tips to stay consistent focus on the process and not solely on the outcome a lot of us when aiming for certain goals only focus on what the outcome will be like instead of ensuring we are disciplined during the process of reaching those goals with discipline comes consistency then your goals i feel like discipline is going to be a whole nother conversation because discipline is i feel like they really do work hand in hand you have to be disciplined in order to be consistent yeah but in in terms of this what i what i'm getting from this i feel like sometimes the end goal is so big that we really do fall off the consistent route because like sometimes when you're only seeing small increments of success you fall off because the bigger picture is so big Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean so it's like let's just say you have like two you're looking like at two million follower goal or something or you're looking at a weight loss and you're trying to lose two stone but every week you're only using one pound one pound one pound and the process is taking so fucking long i feel like sometimes that will allow us to fall off because it's like i've only lost four pounds this week i've only gained 200 followers this week it's just not working out let me quit rather than actually seeing the positives of the fact that you are four pounds lighter lighter and 200 pounds 200 followers more Mm -hmm. than you started i feel like a lot of times we see the negativeness of like the process as opposed to the positives yeah and it's also about i don't know how i'm going to word this but it's also about how you measure your growth are you Mm -hmm. seeing it as your distance from your goal or are Mm -hmm. you seeing it as your distance from where you were Mm -hmm. when you were aiming higher exactly not gonna lie (laughs) (laughs) Ah! i can tell you think i don't know your face i just said this bitch wasn't listening i didn't hear god that (laughs) <laughs> yes yes <laughs> yes take it off take it off love i didn't hear a fucking thing i was trying to move on to the i was trying to find the next point and i couldn't find it fucking no i am so sorry please do say what you were saying again i said yeah It's about how we measure our growth. Yeah. Do you measure it as the distance from where you want to be? Or do you measure it as how much you've progressed from where you were? And highlight on measurement. I feel like the issue is enough enough of us. Enough of us don't track. Nah, this is (laughs) this definitely isn't no for sure podcast. I'll tell you that. But we finna we finna we finna grab what we can. A lot of us don't measure our process. Mm. So I really do believe in taking pictures. And we use other people as as the measurement of our process. And it's not because it's they're, not on it. their own process, they're on their own process, on their own timeline. They have their own ruler. Yeah, exactly. When you're comparing yourself to other people and things like that, I feel like it's really, really important to have your own measurement of success in terms of proper finding a way to monitor your growth and things. Mm. So whether that be um, having a chart where it's like, okay, every every month you see your follower growth or every month you see how your knowledge has advanced or in terms of sales, every month track how many sales you had. Like, I feel like when you actually can measure in, like the bigger goal is the bigger goal, but appreciating month to month or week to week what the increases are i think it will give you more inkling to keep going to keep going to keep going because i know like when i was measuring like obviously you guys know i'm on my weight loss journey so far i've lost 10 pounds but it's like every time i saw a pound going down it was like oh shit so this shit is actually working Mm. okay let me keep going let me keep going so now you're measuring it by the pound yeah so even though i have a bigger goal that is still quite far to go i managed to learn how to appreciate every pound Mm. that i lost and yeah funny enough i was talking about the same thing on um 
90s baby when I was talking about happiness and measuring happiness. Find the happiness in the little achievements. Yeah. Yes, you're not in the big goal. Yes, the grandeur of things haven't yet happened, but every step forward is something that should be celebrated. You don't need to wait till you wait, you you do the big thing before you celebrate, before you go out with your girls, before you have a good time. Every little step of success should be celebrated. So even if you've hit that extra, the end of the month, 500 followers, or I'm talking about, obviously I can only talk about it within my own space, but whatever that means to you, or you did a, you finished a project that you were happy about, or, you did something or for those that are in sports you did something at you know a certain time yeah. speed or whatever it is find happiness in those little achievements that in turn will bring you to the top because i feel like sometimes we have the grand scheme i want to have this yeah and then the only thing we're looking at is that big thing let's appreciate the smaller steps nothing in this world starts grand yeah the eiffel tower they didn't just wheel it in and then just plop it down it's that brick by was... brick brick by just brick plop it down brick bam brick bam brick brick bam brick brick bam brick the pyramids they they didn't just land there those shits are brick built of brick. brick upon brick yeah Agreed. So lay your bricks, build your shit, bitch. Build your, bitch. Yeah. And go go succeed. Okay, okay, I'll just go through the rest of them. So again, break your goals into smaller ones to give us milestones we can celebrate along the way. I didn't even read that. Me and my producer were quite insane. You don't know. Things always seem a lot when you try and do everything at once, but by splitting your process, work, and goals into smaller milestones, you'll be able to maintain consistency because it won't feel overwhelming to you. Thank you. And of course, don't wait till you feel like it. As humans, it's natural to do things when we're in the mood for it but a lot of the time in the field. our goals require attention outside of those moods make a habit of getting and getting up and doing things regardless of your mood if you don't do it it won't get done if you don't do it it won't get done if you don't do it it won't get done if you don't do it it won't get done if you don't do it it won't get done if you don't do it it won't get done if you don't do it it won't get done if you don't do it it won't get done if you won't do it it won't get done if you don't do it it won't get done if you don't do it it won't get done that's what you need to say to yourself when you are lying down instead of revising you need to say something. If you, you don't, don't do it, it, it won't get, get done. done. Period. So yeah, that's consistency, guys. And again, we're all dealing with it, but do tell me your stories. See how it goes. Put it in the comments. If it's working out for you, if everything that we've said today has inspired you, please give it in the comments. But uh, before we move on, mm -hmm. there's one more thing I want to say. Let's talk about it. <sighs> Let's talk about it. Guys, you're not subscribing. You're not subscribing to the thing in it. Those that are on YouTube, you're not subscribing. Those that are on Spotify, you are not so, written. Ah, so me and Victor have come created a song. Yes, we've been practicing today and we're gonna share it with you, all right? And while we're singing the song, I want every motherfucking person in the Bamba Club. Bro, if that Ross button down there is still red, I want you to press it. Wrong. Subscribe. And those that are on Spotify, I want you to give this show a five star rating. So while we are singing this song, we are going to do it. You are going to do it for us. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, dear. Subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, your subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. Tell your mommy to subscribe, yo. Subscribe, subscribe. Tell your daddy to subscribe, yo. Subscribe, subscribe. For like, subscribe, subscribe, yo.
subscribe, subscribe. Sub, 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 yo. Subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. Tell your daddy to subscribe, yo. Subscribe, subscribe. Johnny Boy, subscribe, yo. Hey, whoa, subscribe, subscribe. Well, I can't, why haven't you subscribed? Subscribe, subscribe. Bookie Baby. Subscribe, yo. Subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, yo. Subscribe, subscribe. Thank you. Right, guys, we are going to move on to win or bin. You guys already know the fucking name of know the, the game. Fucking the vibe. Bumba Clark name and that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm just obsessed with your teeth. Like and it's the I know I know you clock me when we're talking, you see my eyes just go down and I, I thought look you were just up. looking at me like you're in love with me. I thought that's what it was. I thought you were just looking at me in endearment, like wow. I really do love this girl. Wow. Okay, thank you. Um I'm joking. <laughs> I'm, joking. I'm joking. All right, guys, you know what it is, win or bin. So we're going to give a topic of conversation. And you're going to tell us whether it's a win or a bin and why. Uh, and of course, make sure you comment down below because we need to know how you feel about Make sure you comment down below because we need to know how you feel about the show and about the flow. Yeah. Per. Thank you. So comment below and see. How y'all feeling? And we want to know whether you think it's the win or a bin and why. And we know if you know it's the win or bin. <laughs> <laughs> you need to do a compilation of the number of times you broke out in rap. I don't, this listen, episode. I've just been breaking out in rap and that you are, it's a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> You're dumb. <sighs> I'm not a rapper. Cool. Win. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Win or bin? Gambling, playing the lotto, betting, etc. Win. Just because the last time I gambled, I won. How much I you won. win? I won. Thank you. I won. How much you win? So it was in it was it was in Vegas. I won like maybe two hundred dollars. Oh, you rich. Her. You rich. Can I just say, you have a beautiful face. Wow. <laughs> it's quite difficult to sit across him when your no. face is that straight. When your yeah. face is like symmetrical. The question is, are you trying to sit on it? Um. Yeah. Obviously, when you're ready to have that conversation, I'm here to chat in it, so. Don't Tight. forget to subscribe, 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 subscribe. <laughs> yeah, we finna talk about that. Um, we finna talk about after that. After the show. After the show. You really, but you're not you bending your head, your cap like 2000. Oh, God. I'm. Uh, blood of Jesus. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, me. <laughs> Listen, yeah, let me tell you something. The last time I won, yeah, I won like five pounds on a scratch card, innit? Oh. What do you mean, oh, at least I won. I've never I've never actually won anything like to brag about. And it's the fact that okay, I, I might say bin because I will never gamble off of my own back. Mm -hmm. That time in Vegas, my American friend gave me fifteen dollars and just said sit down. I ended up winning I think it was even more than two hundred dollars. You want a little something, something? Yeah, because me and my boy we split it, and it was like a hundred and fifty each. So it was probably like three hundred. But I'd no, I'd, I'd actually, I'm gonna say bin to gambling. I think for me, gambling, I'm gonna say win, just because if it's controlled, it's good. Yeah. Why it's a bin is because there's some people who are addicted to gambling. And you end up doing a mad thing in order to, in order for the thrill of hopefully winning yeah. all that money back. And people get very delusional. I've seen people that they will sell their house, sell, steal money from their yeah. family. I'm not for all of that. 
but I feel like for me, I've done it before in terms of like a bit of enjoyment, like, oh yeah, you know, is it my lucky day kind of a thing? Yeah. Like, yeah, is it my lucky day? Am I gonna win something? That'd be cute. Like, yeah. Did you see the time Drake gambled like one point something million? And lost. And then made back double. Oh, really? Yeah. See, he has that money to gamble with. So it's like when, when you're gambling in those amounts, when you win, it's obviously going to be plentiful. But yeah. for us, when we're down here gambling 30 pounds. Especially if you're lost, if it's your last 30 pounds, I feel like if you gamble, gamble being okay with. That's why, of course, gambling will be a win for video? you. Mm hmm. Of the guy, he's a pastor. He went to some church convention in in, in Las Vegas, and he lost the he basically lost the money. I don't know what happened. Whether he got to a fight with one of the police officers. Anyways, he's in court now, and he's basically blaming the Las Vegas people because he basically gambled all his money, like as in all his money. He and took out his to credit blame. card. He's trying to blame uh, Las Vegas, saying that they prey on vulnerable people to come and gamble, that they make it so easy to withdraw money using their credit card, this and that and this and that. Why did they force you to gamble? So if you're sat here as the vulnerable person saying this, you need to charge it. I'm sorry. I just shut up. I yeah, know. charge it and shut up. Because I get, like, I feel like this is the problem. When there's a lack of accountability, people are quick to be like, People are quick to blame outside sources. The reason why I'm like this is because of this, this, this. No. Let's look into yourself for a minute. And you know what's so crazy? Even I've been kind of strung into that concept because I saw a TikTok recently and this woman was on a podcast thinking she was super deep, barefoot with her foot crossed. Like, ah. Oh, um, a bit brown at the bottom, so it looks like there was walking You know, on, she's on really like thing. one with the earth. Yeah, you know? one with the earth. She was like, oh, um, when a flower doesn't grow, do you blame the flower? No, you don't blame the flower. You think of the environment. Is there enough sunlight? Is there enough water? Like, is the soil fertile? But guess what? And you're what, trying to compare that to humanity. But guess what is different between a flower and a person? We can move. But I got legs. But I got legs. If my environment is not good for me, I can step out of that. And again, this is different. Maybe some people are in toxic family homes and things like that. But if I'm if I'm in let's isolate the situation, yeah. If I'm in a, if I'm in Vegas. And I'm doing, I'm seeing cling, 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 cling. Everybody's paying money. Why did you not go to the cinema? <laughs> Leave the place. You can walk out. Leave. Just know when it's time to stop. And that's, yeah, that's, I guess that's the point of addiction. You're past the point of consciousness. Yeah, so now, now we're moving into addiction and stuff. But we're just talking about that guy who's in court. Yeah. Who was where, there's no one else to blame in that situation except you if you knew that you had a gambling addiction why did you go on the trip to vegas, to vegas. why is there a church convection in vegas because this is not a flipping Ugh, anyway maybe it's just a small part of vegas that's a gambling place but i really feel like Ve small part of vegas yeah vegas is gambling oh is it land oh is it land okay I was I, yeah i was there like this you ain't year. have to be in there. If you knew you had the issue, why would you go to hell? If you know you, what I mean? Why would you go to your Don't hell? Go to the suckers expecting not to see a clown, bitch. Yeah, exactly that. So, but in terms of gambling, I would go to Vegas to have a good time. And if I lost money, I'd be okay with that. I sure but, did. Do you know what I mean? You still, you were, you still have a home. Yeah. You still, you can still buy Louis Vuitton loafers. Do you know what now, I mean? That's an environment that you have the choice to leave. Yeah, please. You know. But I guess, I, I don't know, I guess I've never had a gambling addiction where you could just leave and stuff. I don't know, guys. I don't want to talk about why I feel about those kind of stuff because, you know, the internet. There's some people that, yeah. that hate me and will be watching this show. Okay, guys, we are going to move on to our next win or bin. We've got win or bin. Giving a chaser a chance. So dating someone who has wanted you for a long time. So, inspired by a discussion of this story, after seven years of crushing, rapper Yo Gotti and Angela Simmons are officially in a relationship. This announcement has made 
was made on Simmons Instagram with a photo of the pair and the caption reading, you're all I need and more. So let's just say someone's been on you for bumba clot and you're like, you're not my type, you're da 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 da. And then all of a sudden you're like, I can give this a go. Would you go there or would it's like, to this day, I would never like, once I have that mood, that, uh-uh, I'm never gonna give it a chance. I, I would give a chaser a chance. You give a chaser a chance. Has there been a time where you've ever been chased? Um, no. So you Which are the chaser. Yeah. Or you just have a mutual. I just, I don't know. I, I, and it's not, it's not like, oh, someone gives me attention and I run for it straight away. It's just more so. You give me, if we vibe, we vibe. If we vibe. I fucking hate vibe. men like you. Whatever. Let me sick. If your face is. Anyway, yeah. Per. If we vibe, we vibe, but just know there's been a scene. But if there's a sexual attraction, point. yeah. So a sexual attraction is first, but if we vibe, we vibe. Like you know, there's some people like if you. However, if, I'm trying to step out of that though. Like it's I'm I'm not trying to make it about looks. Yeah. You are a very looks person. You know. You love you love you love it when they are hearts. We love it. For me, I love it when they're hot too. I love it. Like, but that's, I'm very also hot. I think I, I'm very turned on when people chase me. I love people that beg. Right. Beg me. Tell me you love me. Tell me you, I like when someone is on my cock. Tell me you fight aggressively. Like, I love aggression. Yeah, man. And the thing is, if it's someone that I... I feel like if somebody was to beg me over time, I'd give them chance. I'm sorry. Exactly. If somebody was to dig... Ooh. Bone apple teeth. I'm going to take that shovel from you. And we're going to see what it do. We're going to see what it do, chicken and stew. Like, as in, this is someone that... You know, like just eat. I really, really fancy. It really turns me on when people beg me. I'm sorry. It's it's not beg. that it's not that you accepting their beg is now you're with that person. It's just you're just giving them a chance. I to love see when what's people. Like, do you know what? I'm not even saying I don't even like that word beg. But when someone is determined, yeah, I don't like that word even, beg. Even even outside of relationships, there's some people who I take under me in terms of content creation mm. because of how persistent they were in terms of making themselves visible. I remember we spoke about this. Like, I cannot ignore somebody who refuses to be ignored. In terms of the invites to the Spotify event, yeah. you were telling me, even though these people, then you know, they're not I don't have ta- huge names, yeah. but they were people that, one, consistently showed me love, or two, yeah. if they're in the podcast game, have been so consistent, it's not even been an option to ignore them. Yeah, there's sometimes where it's not an option. It's like, this person is really showing interest and they see my value and they're showing me love constantly and a lot of times i can't see it or a lot of times because i'm so busy and everyone is messaging me at the same time i don't have the space but there's sometimes when somebody is pushing 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 for you even i've got a new social media manager she has been literally on my case for time wow and i'm not and to the point where i started remembering her like Mm. This girl's been really pushing for me, pushing for me, pushing for me. And now she's in my head because every time I do something, she will show me love. Every time I see it, she will chase it. Every time I do something, she'll be like, remember me, remember me, remember me, remember me. Yeah. To the point where now I've had to hire her. Do you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? That's kind of what happens in terms of relationships for me. Like if somebody shows me in a position where at least you now become visible to me and it's like, oh, this person has really... Yeah, been on my car. But how how do you feel about that kind of stuff with friendship? When someone is, I feel like I feel like I'm not. A fan no, I'm not a fan of, of it. I'm not a fan of in friendship. I feel like in friendship, when someone's too on you, sometimes it could be off putting. It could be off putting because it's confusing. It's like what what, what do you, what do you want? want here? I feel like in our situation and in anyone's situation that is doing well in their staff, that is like. The, the, the so you know the bad trust. boys and girls yeah. it's very difficult to trust people because people have an ulterior motive to you um i guess in, in any sort of relationship capacity but i feel like sometimes if you're a good discernment of character you can just judge those things yeah. and i feel yeah you could just judge those things to be honest 
But yeah, I think in friendships, they are cool off. But in relationships, I just, it's a bit of a turn on for me when someone is showing right. real interest in me and showing interest in what I like and who I am. And they're really, really forward. Like, I love forward. I love forward. I just love her. Like, how, how was your day? Or you've gone out, I love you've gone out triple, the night before. I love triple, triple, quadruple text me. And they pop up like, how was it last night? I want to know. Tell me about it. Yeah, I like I like people who are border like borderline obsessed with me. I like I, don't. I, I like pe- being with people who are a little bit show a bit of obsession. I don't because I find it awkward when I ca- I can't I can't reciprocate that energy. I can that because I'm a crazy motherfucking bitch. Or you're an A star actress. No, I am. You, anyways, you guys know I'm a lover girl at heart. I know. Guys, we are going to move on to the final winner bin, and that is exposing stylists, beauticians for bad services. Winner bin. Bin. Why? Exposing. So when you have you seen the girls come on the internet and they're like, "This person." Oh, goes, don't go to laid by. Don't go to hair by. Don't yeah. go to nails by. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, okay, conflict of interest. Conflict of interest. Conflict. Conflicty flicky. Yes, because, you know, you're trying to tell other people why they shouldn't go to them, but also no, because you're giving them... Free publicity. Free publicity. publicity. And like I said in my last sketch, you won't be cancelled, cancelled. You'll be in everyone's mouths cancelled. So your name is still there. Yeah. What you want to do is move on from that person... And when you have the opportunity one-to-one on the ground to be telling people not to go to that person, you will do it. Let me tell you something, yeah. People, and this is the problem with social media, people think because of numbers that equates to power. (laughs) Numbers do not equate to power. In terms of, there's some people that go on the internet and they're like, 50,000 people saw that I bashed this girl. And they feel like, that's enough to cancel them. Unfortunately, it's not like you said publicity. There's one girl, you guys know who I'm talking about. Listen, Lati Kutukutud. Yes. This girl has had review, 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 bad review. I've known about this girl. You, that's not even a bad B. Lati Kutukutud, yeah, bad B, sorry. We know about this girl. Every day, bad review, bad review, bad reviews. If it's not nails, it's hair. If it's not hair, it's something. It's skin care. If it's not skin care, this is that's three in one. It's this girl to this day. Till this day. Till this day. Till this day. In business. She's still in business. I personally would not go and tell people about my bad review because it just gives them PR. It's just free PR. Because people, what they're going to do is they're going to go and they're going to see the hairstyle or see the lash tech or see the nails and be like, oh, like maybe it was just a mistake. But Exactly. Oh, uh, while she's in this period where everyone's dragging her, let me like go over and be super nice and see if I get the hairstyle that I need. Trust me. And I just kind of feel like let's not jump on like it's all good and games but you lot are just giving them free promo like there's some people that i think should have been cancelled like minus hair and stuff mm. that you lot they didn't cancel all they did was give them free promo listen let me tell you something kanye is gonna kanye is going to come back with kanye a fucking back. Start his, song his, yeah his. and will literally ha huh, not that one i'm drunk yeah, bring in Maury and nephew. I'm so drunk already. Yeah, that they haven't been cancelled. Do you know what I'm saying? You're not cancelling these girls unless they did some. And I always say unless this, there's a there's certain communities that if you talk about them, it's finished. But if it's just for you and you had a bad hair day, sorry, they're getting numbers. I would just say, like you said, your community in terms of where you are on ground is the best place you could because they value what you say. I feel like people realise, people have to value what you say before they believe you. And if they don't know you and you're just someone giving a bad review, sorry, you're, they're just going to... And if it's like, you're, like, imagine it's very different to when your sister 
or your bestie gives you a review about something to another person, a stranger giving you a review about something. It hits more when it's your family. Yeah. It hits more when it's people that you know. It hits more when it's people that you actually fuck with. Not some random girl that's wanted to shout on TikTok and is getting numbers. Exactly, because she's not even more so concerned about the bad experience. She's thinking at uh, TikTok, I'm making a bad review. Let's see what the algorithm does. Oh, and one thing, you know, you know the black community vibes off negativity so they're gonna lap it up because we love tea and we love gist and we love mess but they're still gonna book that girl so i'm gonna say bin but i will also say sometimes it's good to know where to avoid and it's the fact that you can tell when people are doing it just for clout because they want to drag someone and when people are doing it because like girls no don't do it yeah you can always tell i don't know when that voice comes out girls no don't do it I'm finished. Hot topics of the week, baby. All right, guys, we are going to move on to hot topics of the week. We're going to get to the meter things. We're going to get all matey because guess what? Yeah, a lot's fucking happened this week, hasn't mm-hmm. it? It's been a chaotic week. This but do you know month, what? Like... We love a bit of chaos, don't we? We love a bit of chaos. We love it when we... <laughs> You make please edit I cover this bottle because they didn't pay for promo. Anyways, let's get it cracking. Prince Harry shakes tables. In a recent leak of his new book, we Prince. Were reading this one. Oh, anyway. Sorry, I keep forgetting. We have to yeah. act like it's completely new. Yeah. But remember, we were reading Prince, through the thing. Oh, yeah. There. Prince Harry shakes tables. In a recent leak of his new book, Prince Harry said that his brother, Prince William, and his wife, Kate Middleton, encouraged him to wear the Nazi uniform he wore when he was 20 then laughed at him when he did he also said that william physically assaulted him in an argument over his wife megan that he took cocaine and that he killed 25 people while he served time in the military during his war in afghanistan and that he also lost his virginity on a field after meeting a middle-aged woman at a pub when he was 17 at eton yes all this week in his new book spare that is out next week not the book getting leaked before you even I hate that for him I hate that for him I feel like um, because I was seeing the way it was picked because it's very interesting how the narrative changes when people pick things without context yeah the story will completely change you will find that the conversations that are being picked apart now out of context will change once you read the whole book when it comes out so i feel like it would be very silly of me to come and be like yeah a comment was taken out of this so but there's a whole ideology around the statements that are just as important because i want him to share a story yeah in the way that he wanted to the highlight may not be the assault over his brother but over the dynamic of his household generally that that has just been picked and now a new narrative has been run that about him, him about when him. he's talking about his past like, it, what, like it's not what fair are we doing because now he looks like a victim and maybe will didn't want to be painted as a victim maybe he wanted to show the toxicity of his family in in its entirety but now you guys have told him that he got beat, banged up by his brother and stuff like that. And it's just like, oh, what, what, oh, you let William fuck you up? Da, 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 da. Kind of thing. Because that's what I'm seeing at the moment. I'm seeing abusive household and things like that. And I think it's important. And I've learned it's really important to take things in its whole entirety mm. as picking apart. It's not fair. It's not fair to say, like, it's, it's just not fair for him as an author. I think it's wrong. I want to put some positivity positivity in this lap because I saw a lot of things on the internet. And again, it's disgusting. I don't condone um, domestic abuse, but having two boys in a family household and them fighting, physically fighting, I don't know. It's not normal. It's not normal in my guys. Fight, but boys, I always, boys can beat each other up and go and play Xbox the next day. Yeah. So, so what is the? Do you know? That's where it comes. The conversation of context comes in because we've just heard, oh, William beat up Harry, and then now William looks without. We've not read the book. We've only got this 
this one liner and people start running with different narratives. And even then, he said physically assaulted. We don't know who won. Yeah. Harry probably mashed his what shit up. What if Harry beat him up? What if What if William took the first punch and he boxed him up? So much so that his hairline went further back. Like, we That's don't know. That's probably why. We don't know. Like, I feel like it's... And the thing is, I think why I'm specific about this is because it's the first time somebody in the royal family has publicly spoken out about the environment that we've never had insight with before i feel like it's important like if you guys really care about him the way you look like megan megan it's important to give them time to say the story in the way that's supposed to be portrayed has not it, the way you want to run it has it ever happened to you where you've you cool you've been in two positions one position looking at a dynamic that you've seen and imagined what it was like from the outside in to finally getting like in and then having the moment where it's just like, oh. I think we'll be very surprised about- It doesn't have to be family. It can be relationships. It can be friendships. Yeah, of course, of course. The way your mind is, is that your mind will always grandiose a situation your mind will always make things bigger than what it is so a lot of times in this situation we are going to go for the worst thing we are going to go for the sexual abuse sexual assault domestic violence this 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 we're going to really go for the extreme of things and then we're going to read the book and we're going to be like this just looks like a normal family to me of course still the abuse still mental abuse still uh systematic abuse in terms of him being a raw member and the the standard that he had to set for himself and what that done to his wife and things like that of yeah. course but i think it will really humanize him and i think it will really humanize the royal family because it will you'll be looking at it and you'll probably mirror some things in your family yes family beef yes there's family issues Yes, your mommy cheeses on your daddy, and now you've got bare half brothers or sisters. Once again, That's a normal thing, bro. Once again, the same way we were talking about in terms of achievement and goals, measuring it from where you are to where you want to be, or from where you were to how close you are. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. In this, the mess as well, in terms of like normality and relativity, are we seeing them as how far away from us they are or how close they are to us trying to yeah. creep away and make themselves into the royal family, the monarchy. You guys are a normal fucking family, bro. Yeah. Not normal, but humans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are humans with a title. That's how I see them. I think that's why I'm really I chill about that. this. You're a human with a title. You're a human with a title. Like, that's how I see them. So when I see stuff like the, the, the conversations are being had, mm. it's nothing normal to what a normal family structure will have. But I think where we have... And that's not our fault. Their gossip is global. That's where it. They, where we've where we've idolized them and we've made them here and mm. they're the royal family. But when you really take away the titles and you take away the jewels that they've stolen and the paintings that they've stolen and the tax money that we have to pay and you strip them down, yeah. it's Willie, Harry, and the thousands of people that they killed, yeah. and the thousands uh, and the and the and the colonization. When you take all away that suit. It's really Willie and Harry and Kitty. You know what I mean? <laughs> and Lisbeth. And Lisa. And Lisbeth. But, uh, Mommy Liz. You know, it's just, it really is that. But can I just say, I'm very proud of Harry. I'm proud of every man that is open to discuss and be vulnerable because it's so difficult. I'm really proud of him. Yeah. So big up Harry. So I feel like it's important in these times where somebody for the first time is coming out to be vulnerable. And we give them space to space say to their whole truth before we say anything because I feel like I, I, I'm cool with people. Everyone is open. To, you, you once you put your things out there, you are open to judge. You you have given yourself a, the people the green light to have an opinion about what you've said. And there are so many people who are out here saying, "Ah, oh, you know what? You know what? Yeah, at, at, the, at first I support with Harry and Meghan, but now they're just attention seeking." When you have been kept quiet for that long. And you finally have a chance to speak after they stepped back from their royal titles. Mm-hmm. I'ma sing it on Netflix. I'ma sing it on Hulu. I'ma sing it on YouTube. Hundred percent. I'ma sing it on Spotify. Well, I will say with everyone, I don't want to hear any opinions until the book is out. Period. Per. Not not quotations of this and that of what you thought that somebody said that you said that you heard from the Sun. Let the book come out first, and if people still feel the same, I can co-sign that. But for now, let the book be read the way it was supposed to be yeah. read. Period. 
and I don't know if it's going to be out by the time this comes out, but read the book first and then have an opinion. And I don't want to hear anyone's opinion that hasn't mm. read the book, if I'm being honest. If I'm being sincerely honest. I'm tired of people giving opinions on half information. It's super... Uh, that's that, an, that is Twitter for you because no one would have read the book, but they will see someone's tweet and just think, you know what, I have this thought. If you haven't read the book, shut up. If you ain't shot nobody, then shut up. Shut so the, the fuck, fuck up. up. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Anyways, so we've got anti-strike laws. The UK government has announced anti-strike laws that will allow employers to sue unions if their work, if their workforce use them to try and seek better working conditions or compensation via striking. The new law states employees would need to meet minimum service hours before refusing to work. That's disgusting. That's really disappointing to hear. So if you guys don't know, in the UK, there's been a lot in striking, in particularly for, did I just fuck up the words? No, 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 no. Particularly NHS, particularly Transport for London, Transport for London all the government funded places, post office, um, not post office, uh, Royal Mail have been striking. Was it post office or Royal Mail? And it was one I of those companies. One of the postal companies because of how much there's the workload has increased and the cost of living has also increased yeah. but the minimum wage or their standard wage in those companies have That's not what? increased at all so they are striking and refusing to work um in order for there to be action taken by the companies the only now, thing is i found out recently that apparently the train tfl people they could be making up to 60k yeah but still you should get what you deserve i mean and we're not talking about just fair enough that's the train drivers but we're talking about people the company as a whole True. admin the people on the gates the um the, like the, the people the that, that clean that the, on during covid and yeah died. she passed away yeah the cleaners there are so many people. yes the train drivers are a big factor the cleaners the engineers people the you know the other people yeah. who are part of these companies people that work in the main office administration there are so many cogs in in this that's in this true. thing that again they deserve to be paid higher rates and especially i think the issue is the cost of living is going up and people's wages are not being met nhs in particular the level of the way nhs has increased Ooh. has been crazy i remember the the the, the, ho the hotel the hospital that they built i don't know if it's even being used there's a new ho there's a new hotel uh ho hospital that they built during lockdown it's not even being Where? used Guys, please comment below. I cannot remember. A big hospital to accommodate for all the people in COVID. Because no one wants to be nurses anymore. It's not being used because I, I can't remember. There's, there's not enough staff. Mm. There's not enough staff. The the nurses are dropping out. They're they're going into private because there's more money in private. The NHS nurses are not making money in comparison to the to the private yeah. nurses. And the NHS the private nurses are doing a lot less than the NHS nurses. Then the doctors, same thing. The workload is ridiculous. At the least pay them the amount that they'll be working. They'll be they'll, they deserve to get paid. It's 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 disgusting and i'm sad that now the government is putting things in place where they can't even fight or they can't even strike this is why people the nurses and the teachers are doing early fun because there's more money in hanging your breast than to no i'm a capping you're not i'm, I'm plus uh, student loan Ooh. The value of these people are not being shown and it's really really okay yeah. it's really upsetting me. and for the amount of work that goes into finally qualifying to being a nurse for nothing oh for nothing but i really for all the for all the people within healthcare that are working hard covid is back on the rise they're saying jesus yeah covid is covid is back on the rise they're saying um, NHS is in a real cli crisis and um, it's only the government that can deal with this. I don't know whether they're going to, anything could happen. They could privatise NHS where they will have a similar structure to America, America. where you have to pay for healthcare. Right. <laughs> I don't know. But Do yeah. You know, and it's the fact that in America that shit is expensive. 
it's expensive yeah everyone is on insurance everyone is on insurance out there well ev- everyone that can be everyone can can be is on insurance yeah do you know how the, the price of delivering a baby it's like 30k or something like that just Fucking to give man. life just to give life it's really really sad just but to guys, do something that god put in place for, for us for free but guys um we're gonna keep monitoring the situation and any updates positively and negatively we're gonna we're gonna talk about it here but yeah i'm really sad about it but i really hope this at the moment it's just conversational as to what's happening mm. i don't know what the result will be um but we'll keep you in the loop but yes um i think that was coherently yeah 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 i think i'm gonna end it there we've been filming for ages huh we've been filming for a while yeah out to hour 15 but yeah guys we are going to end it there thank you guys it's been another motherfucking week of cocktails and takeaways and of course we want to say thank you to our co-host where do we find you victor um instagram tiktok instagram victor kunda tiktok victor dot kunda is the same thing yeah make sure you find victor on on his social media platform it's really just yeah it's leaning Victor Kunza on all social media platforms. It will be put in the description. And with that being said, we are going to be back next week with another bad boy or another motherfucking bad girl. It's Her. been a pleasure. I'm motherfucking out. Thank Enjoy you your for week. having me. Bye.